Welcome everyone to another episode of Slasher Scotty. I am your host Scotty McCoy and I have a wonderful guest on the phone right now. I have the beautiful and talented Melanie Kinnaman and she was a final girl in Friday the 13th Part 5 A New Beginning. She played Pam Roberts. Hi Melanie, how you doing? Hi, great. How are you, Scotty? I'm doing great. I'm so excited for this interview. I was really nervous. Greg told me so many great, amazing things about you, and I was super excited to have you on uh, on my show. That's so nice. That's <laughs> so nice. Well, thanks for having me. No problem. I'm so glad that you could join me. Um, so the first question I got for you um, is nothing regarding Friday the 13th, but it, oh, actually, uh, yeah, um, how did you get your start into acting? Uh, I started out as a singer-dancer. Okay. And uh, so I did a lot of shows in New York on stage, and uh, then I got some commercial. I always wanted to be an actress, but uh, singing and dancing got me on the stage, and I started doing commercials. So I got to act in commercials, and then I started getting parts in plays, and then I got a lead in a play off Broadway, and it went from there. Awesome. That's great. Um, so, uh, what was your audition like for Friday the 13th, Part 5? Uh -huh. Well, it was very interesting. You know, <laughs> first I didn't know what it was about because they kept it secret. But I had an idea when I went in for the audition and Frank Mancuso Jr. asked me to, uh, to improv a mur that I was being murdered. <laughs> so, I prepared myself and did that. And when I finished... I was lying on the floor, as I remember, and I looked up at the desks. There were Danny Steinman and Frank Mancuso Jr. and the casting people all staring at me with their mouths hanging open. So I thought to myself, well, I either did really well or really bad. <laughs> and uh, they were very happy, and they called the next day so I had the role. Awesome. And I know a lot of Friday the 13th has a lot of controversy with the uh, ending with uh, Pseudo Jason, but I'm not going to lie. Friday the 13th Part 5 is one of my favorites of the franchise, and a lot of it is due to you and Shavar Ross. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. No I'm problem. I'm happy that uh, you like it. So <laughs> I I'm do. Really I'm a huge fan. And uh, speaking of Shavar Ross, what was it like working with him? Well, he's such a professional. You know, even nice. at that young age, he was so easy to work with. He was always in the scene, always on time. He knew his lines. It was great to work off of him because he was, um, he's a good actor. So it awesome. made the job really easy. And he's a nice guy, so it was, it was fun to work with him. Right, yeah, I interviewed him uh, quite a while ago, and he was, he was a very good interview. He, we spoke literally on the phone. We, our interview was probably about an hour long, but we were on the phone for about a good four and a half hours. He likes to talk. Oh, my God. He likes to talk. Yes, I know. He and I are friendly. I awesome. see him from time to time, and he likes to talk. So. <laughs> he was a <laughs> He's great guy. more talkative than I am. Uh, so what was your uh, most memorable moment while filming Friday the 13th Part 5? Let me think. I really did enjoy the chainsaw scene because we shot that on Halloween night, October 31st. And it was raining, and it was the setting was just perfect. And it was a very serious scene because the stunt coordinator had to block all the action, block out everything, so that nobody got injured. He was very concerned that I was going to be working with a real chainsaw. So he was concerned for Tom Morga, who was <laughs> the stunt guy, you know, who played Jay. Right. Uh, yeah, and uh, he just said to me, please don't hurt him. Please don't hurt my boy. Don't make a mistake with this chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> so it was very, it was a lot of rehearsal, a lot of blocking out the movements, and we shot it, um, it was all in one, one evening that that awesome. scene was done. So it's a lot of, a lot of time and, and organizing everything. But it was, a, it was a joy. It was a lot of fun. And Tom Morgan's great. Awesome. So yeah, speaking of Tom Morgan, how was it working with him? Again, another great performer, uh, very professional. Uh, he's a seasoned professional. I mean, he's been doing it so long as a awesome. stuntman. And yeah. then he was a stunt coordinator. So this was, um, he, kn he knew what he was doing. Right. And I never was worried about uh, my own personal safety when working with Tom. That's awesome. That's great. That's a good, always good to feel safe in that environment because in, yeah, in that type of... With him. Yeah. That's great. That's awesome. Um, what was Danny Steinman like as a director? For me, it was interesting. I know other people had a different relationship with him. I went in there hoping for something 
that didn't pan out. Um, he wasn't a hands-on director with me, but maybe in hindsight, that meant that he had confidence in me and he let me play the role uh, the way I played the role. Mm -hmm. I did ask him a few times for some input about how he wanted that scene to go, but for the most part, I was on my own, and that was difficult having it, having the situation. It was my first lead in a film, okay. and you know, my first lead in a film, and it was Paramount, and you know, I just wanted to make sure I did my very best, and mm -hmm. uh, I kind of was looking to Danny for some extra support. But in the in in the long run, it worked for me because I got much stronger in myself and able to um, to create the character pretty much on my own. Right. That's, that's good, though. And you did an amazing job, too. So definitely kudos to that, especially with no direction and everything and your first lead in a role. You did an absolutely phenomenal job. Well, thank you for saying that. No problem. It's the truth. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, were, you, uh, were you asked to return for Friday the 13th Part 6, Jason Lives? And if so, uh, what happened that it didn't actually happen? Well, when I got Part 5, I got a contract for Part 5 and 6. Okay. So I was signed on to do two. Uh, needless to say, I was very excited about that. <laughs> so when we wrapped part five, we were going to take a month and a two or two off and go into part six. Mm -hmm. So I thought we were ready to go. And I got a, my agent got a phone call from Paramount saying that things are changing because John Shepard, it was, John Shepard and I were, were signed on to do Two. John Shepard had a change of heart and decided he was not going to do any more horror films okay. and he was done yeah. so he refused to do part six okay. so they were going back and forth fine, f trying to figure out how they were going to continue because it was supposed to continue after the last shot of part five part six was going to pick up right there and continue the story right. so they couldn't do that without John obviously mm -hmm. um, and so they had to scrap the whole thing and cast all new people, change the story that they had written where John was going to take over the Jason thing. And they had to bring back, as you see in part six, it's Jason and, and a new Tommy and all of that. So right. that's what happened. Okay. Much to my dismay, that's what happened because I was scheduled to do both films and it would have been a really great thing for me. I agree. Uh, I'm actually going to throw in a bonus question. Uh, I always, you know, the next if they come to a settlement or an agreement with this lawsuit and everything, there would be a, uh, a there, it would be nice to have like you know the thirteenth movie in Friday the Thirteenth series. Um, yeah. I I always said there should be two different movies. One should be in the snow, but I would love to see all of the final girls return and try to finally take care of Jason once and for all. If that were to happen, would you come back? Awesome. That would, I, would, I would be honored to come back. <laughs> that would make my day seeing you come back. And hopefully Pam would be the one to uh, be the final survivor. But don't tell anybody else. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I would love it. I would love it. That would be awesome. Uh, so what was the best? And I have yep. the ability to do it. I have the ability to take him. Yes, you do. You do. You definitely <laughs> do. <laughs> and plus, I mean, nobody else could uh, defeat Jason. But let's be honest, Pam didn't really have her have a fair shot at Jason. She I had Roy. I wasn't given the chance. I didn't have a crack at him. Exactly. I got, <laughs> I got this guy Roy. Who the hell's Roy? I, I could take down Jason. Instead, I'm stuck with some guy. Exactly. <laughs> Any guy off the street. <laughs> right? Exactly. Give me some guy named. What's up with that? <laughs> what was the best part about filming Friday the 13th, The New Beginning, and what was the worst? Best part? Let me see. Well, you know, I had so much responsibility as the lead, and I was able to do all these things and, and create this character and experience the daily um, joy of acting every single day on the set with some great people and and be challenged and try different things and um, see them work and see some things not work. And, and, and I learned a lot, so that's the best part. I really learned right. a lot. The worst part for me was <clears throat> the conditions um, because it was a low-budget film. Mm -hmm. I uh, 
they did try to take care of me, but I was in the, you know, the rain machines. I was soaking wet. It was 30 degrees. Mm -hmm. There was no uh, really, there wasn't a place for me to stay warm. So they did come and cover me with blankets and stuff, but I was still soaking wet. And and it was many, many days of that. All those, all those um, chase scenes and, and all the stuff in the rain, that was not shot in a very short period of time. That right. was weeks <clears> of shooting that. So, uh, and I got the flu while doing it. So, wow. yeah, I'd say that was. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, it does seem very uh, troublesome for that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it wasn't a bad flu, but it was a flu. Right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what was it like working with John Shepard? John was great to work with. Again, a, a very good actor, very prepared, um, a professional. Right. Um, he was into his character the whole time, mm-hmm. which was great. He never, there was only one moment when he was John to me. Most of the time he was Tommy. He stayed in character, which helped my role. You know, it helped right. me. But there was one day that he broke character and he came over and hugged me because I had given him flowers. <laughs> <laughs> I, I put flowers in his trailer one day. Nice. And he came into his trailer the morning and the flowers were already there. And he came running out and he ran up to me and hugged me. Uh-huh. And he startled me. And he said, thank you so much. And he kissed me on the cheek and then he walked away and then he went back to being Tommy for the next month. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> that yeah. is so sweet. So I would regret not asking this question. I know you answered it a bunch of times. I've seen it in interviews before, but I still need to ask it. What is the story behind that disappearing pink sweater? <laughs> so awful. <laughs> I shot everything with the sweater on, and then when it was supposed to come off, it came off logically as you're running, and it's raining. I ditched the sweater, and the continuity screwed it up. In other words, they they took cuts, and the continuity and the editor didn't use the scenes that were continual without the sweater they were bringing back parts they liked well after the sweater was gone so it's the editor he brought this he didn't care he just put in parts that he liked whether i had that sweater on or not right crazy it is crazy crazy it is and my big my big complaint about this is this is paramount pictures right you don't make those kind of mistakes (laughs) exactly Yep. It's a simple continuity 101. You don't do it. Right. And there was so much footage, Scotty. There was so much stuff shot of that, that rain sequence, in mm-hmm. the in, running in the rain, and the, the chase scenes. There's so much film, you didn't ever have to go back and use the stuff that had the sweater in it. Right. Oh. So, to this day, it baffles me right. how that was allowed. Because believe me, I know the work that I had done. They didn't need to go back and get some of those shots with the sweater that was already taken off. Right. And it's funny because... It's not like oops, they sorry. were short on footage. They right. had so much footage. <laughs> oh, my God. That's insane. And it's funny because I have my own production company, and we just finished our first full feature. And uh, it's a horror comedy. And... Um, one of this, we, were, we when we finished filming, and uh, our edit, my our editor was going through uh, through it with me and one of my executives, and we were looking at it, and uh, we were looking at it being chopped up, and uh, the one scene is where me and a couple of my friends in the movie were running to go after uh, the character's name is Relic, which spells killer backwards. Uh, we were going okay. after him, and uh, we were chasing him. And in the one scene, one of the actors uh, was wearing a, uh, I believe it was a red shirt, I want to say. And then, uh, w- and then in the next scene, he-, he was wearing a white shirt when he was in the woods. And I'm like, wait, what happened? I'm like, oh. did his sh- shirt change? How did his shirt change? So we, we, I'm like, go back a little bit. And we look, and I'm like, oh, my God, he wore a freaking different colored shirt. Uh. <laughs> I'm like, oh, and it's too late to film it now because it was, it's called Samhain. It's supposed to be happening in the fall time, and we're editing this in, like, December, January. <laughs> So all the leaves are already gone, so it would definitely look like a totally different area when it was chopped up. It was just better. Like I'm just like, hopefully nobody will notice. If they are, everybody loves Easter eggs at this point. <laughs> just, just let them rip it apart. <laughs> That's terrible. Yep. The, 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 the amended answer to 
answering your question, what is the worst part of Friday the 13th, part five for me, was that sweater <laughs> appearing, disappearing, and appearing. That's yeah. the worst part. Yeah, oh, that is, that is crazy. I'm not joking. Uh, it just came to me. The next time anyone asks me that question, the worst part is that sweater. And it, who cares about the flu? You'll get over that. That pink sweater is living on forever in that movie. Ah, forever. And I personally wouldn't have even had that sweater for my wardrobe. I didn't need it. I should have been in the white shirt from the beginning to the end. <laughs> you, it, then we wouldn't have this problem. It, get rid of the damn sweater. <laughs> Don't ever have me wear the sweater. And then we won't have this problem. Because continuity and editor can't do his job. Right. And it's not even it's not even a pretty sweater, right? It's not even a it's pretty pink sweater. <laughs> hideous. As hideous as my hair was in that movie. Hideous. <laughs> oh my god, I've two hideous things. I'm loving my this hair interview. And that sweater. <laughs> I'm loving this interview. You have me laughing here, you have me dying and over my here. Pants, and my pants in the first shot, the first part of the movie and those giant pants they put me in. And then that damn pink sweater and my hair throughout that movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, you have me dying here. I can't wait to talk to Greg after this. After every inter- I've been I having it. I, I said to myself, thank God they hosed me down. Because now I look slightly better. Yeah. Hey, you looked really good when you were hosed down, right? <laughs> well, at least they hosed down that horrible hair. Yep. The hairdo they gave me, I don't know where that was from. I never had hair like that until I did that movie. <laughs> uh, so they hosed down the hair, and that saved the day. Yeah, exactly. And wouldn't it be something though, because of all the continuity, especially with that pink sweater and everything? If like it's raining out, but you didn't, you weren't even wet. Yeah. Well, that, I'm, I'm surprised that didn't happen. <laughs> that out, Scotty. Yeah, um, thanks for putting that out. Luckily, they didn't do that. Exactly. Yeah, that's so, next. so that's a that's blessing. Next, she's walking around and no, no, she's not wet at all. That is too funny. Well, they couldn't get that wrong. I was wet for three weeks. (laughs) That is true. You know, how do you get that wrong? I'm wet in 90% of the film, so they couldn't get that wrong. But that sweater, I did not need that sweater. That sweater should have not been in that movie. My hair should not have been in that movie. (laughs) You should have been wet from the opening of of the movie, right? The first time you were seen. My my own hair should have been in that movie. I'll tell you. Oh, oh, boy. Oh, oh, boy, that sweater. I swear to God. <laughs> the next question is a little bit of a long one to get to the point. I'm sure you were asked it before, but uh, at the end of Friday the 13th, A New Beginning, you enter Tommy's room, and he's gone. The door closes, and it reveals Tommy standing behind you, and he's wearing the Jason mask and holding up a knife. Now, do you personally believe that Pam was killed, or that was a, or was that a dream? And can you please elaborate your thought process on why you think this? They had said that that was to set up part six. Yeah. So, Tommy was going to be the new Jason. Okay. <clears throat> so, the film picks up, and I fight for my life. See, I don't get killed in that. Okay. Part six, I was going to be alive for most of it. Okay. Fighting again a new Jason, which was Tommy. Okay. That's what they told me. Right. Now, uh, because it didn't, because they didn't finish the script, I don't know <clears throat> how I die in part six. Okay. Because it never happened. Right. But what I was told was I did not die in that scene. Okay. And were you going to die in part six? Well, they never finished the script, but my guess is, yeah. Okay. Because you see how they set up the end of part five. That's true, yeah. I might have escaped at that time. They let me escape a few times where he attempts to kill me. Okay. But I'm guessing he's successful at some point. Because they would have to bring another, they would have to have Jason continue for seven, eight, nine. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, exactly. Uh, so they're not going to let me suddenly be the the, the heroine and the and the franchise is over. Right. So I'm sure I die in part six. Yeah. If it had happened. That's a good point. But I wasn't supposed to die right away. That okay. I know. Okay. Which tells me that I escaped that a hospital room thing. I okay. escaped that. All right. 
So before I go into the last question, um, I want to talk to you about something. So I don't know if you saw my uh, my Doubtfire face challenge that I did a couple years ago um, that Greg nominated me for during my first interview on his podcast. Now I already did four interviews, and I actually nominated you um, as one of the uh, as one of the um, people to do it. Would you be open to doing it? Yeah, I'd be open to doing it. I just don't know how we do it now with all this stuff going on. I agree uh, with that. <laughs> COVID-19, I mean, I have the free time to do it now. Right. I would just have to figure out how I do this because somebody has to hit me. I have to get somebody to do it. That's so, true, too. Yes. I'll need somebody to video and somebody to hit me with the pie. So, you know, we'll figure it out. Yes, definitely. I, I told Greg I would ask you about it and bring it up since I uh, nominated you and I nominated, I believe, Shavar Ross and... Jennifer Bonko and Lar Park Link and Adrian King, and uh, did uh, Shavar do it yet? Um, not that I know of. I haven't. I don't think he has Facebook anymore. I think he ma- mainly has his fan page now, from yeah. my understanding. Yeah. yeah. And I know originally, like my other my other Facebook that I had uh, was it two years ago got shut down by Facebook because I'm a programmer. I'm a web developer for the Coast Guard. But before that, I was. Okay, yeah. I was uh, working uh, with my best friend on with his company, his web company, and uh, in a private message, I was sharing uh, some code that I did uh, for his company to see uh, why it was giving me an error because I couldn't figure out what what it, what it was. And uh, Facebook's algorithms saw, uh, got it as malicious hacking content and completely shut down my account. <laughs> That's why about two years ago, I sent you another Facebook request from this account that I'm currently on. Oh, okay. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> no, I asked because it would be funny if Shabar and I did it together. Oh, that would be great. Yeah, if you talk next time you talk to him, ask him if you two can do it together after this whole mess is over. Yeah. That'd yeah. be awesome. Yeah. I would love That'd that. Funny. Yes. Uh so the last question I have is can you uh tell the listeners um of any future projects that you're working on or anything you would like to promote? Um, cause, and I do know that you're also doing uh, a stand up comedy from what uh Greg told me, so if yeah. you want to also talk yeah. about that. Yes. Well, I've been doing a comedy around town, and I got cast for a pilot for Netflix okay. where I play uh, an actress who is trying to reinvent herself, so she starts doing stand-up comedy, and she becomes a successful comic. Okay. Uh, this project is in the works. There's a famous actress who's going to play the lead in it, so I can't really talk about it, but Netflix is interested, so we're shooting the pilot for that. We were in the process of doing it, and then the shutdown of the uh, of the state came down that it was stay at home in California for COVID nineteen. So, mm-hmm. so none of the studios are shooting. Everything is closed down, including Netflix. But I am working on that Netflix pilot when everything comes back up. So mm-hmm. I will be able to talk about that more. But it's a very interesting. It's a very funny pilot. It's a comedy. And it's about three women at three different stages of their life, three different ages. Awesome. And, uh, yeah, so I play the divorcee who's an act, been an actress her whole life, and she's now trying stand-up comedy. So, it, um, and I got that from them coming to see me perform at the comedy store. So uh, awesome! Well, congratulations uh, on that. Thank you. So of that's course. in the works, and I do my one-woman show, which has also stopped right now due to the situation in America. Mm-hmm. But um, everything hopefully will kick up for all of us soon, mm-hmm. and. Um, I'm supposed to be appearing at Flashback Weekend in Chicago. It's my favorite convention. And that's July 31st through August 2nd, but we're now on hold. I don't know when that's going to happen. If it doesn't happen at the time it's supposed to happen this summer, they will, go, they're, they will postpone it and probably have it in the fall. Okay. So at some point, I will see everybody in Chicago at Flashback Weekend. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Melanie, for uh, giving me your time. It was a pleasure talking to somebody like you. You're so amazing. You're so talented. You're beautiful. You're at a you're oh, a great person. Nice. So I'm very very grateful to have somebody. And I'm not gonna lie, I was very nervous to do this interview. Um, not oh. because I was a, I was afraid of you as a person, because I know you're a sweetheart. I was just I, I'm just so starstruck with you because you're so beautiful and you're so talented in Friday the Thirteenth, and it's one of my favorites in the franchise. So just seeing you. And having you on my show is such an honor for me, and I thank you for that. Well, it's an honor for me to talk to you and to, and to have a chance to uh, have the fans hear what's, what my take is on Friday the 13th. And 
yeah. and to have some insight. I mean, it's fun for them to hear the, some of the behind-the-scenes stuff. So exactly. It's my honor to do that, and, and I'm very grateful for the fans and their constant loyalty and their interest in not only the franchise of Friday the 13th, but their interest in me and my career. I, I'm very grateful for that. Yes. I've been very loyal. Exactly. And I'm grateful to you. Thank you for, for inviting me on your show. Thank you. I, it is definitely my honor. Um, for anybody that wants to find out about Melanie Kinnaman and what she's up to, you heard it here on Slasher Scotty, and you can also check out her IMDb page to keep updated on any film products she has in the works. Yes, I just did an episode of uh, SEAL Team. So, awesome. um That's on CBS, and that will be uh, aired after the whole shutdown. Awesome. Sounds great. You heard that, everybody. So check out check that out on CBS. Thank you so much, Melanie. It's been an honor. Thanks, Scotty. All right. You have a great uh, rest care. of your night. Be safe. Thank you. And Same to you. We'll see, some, we'll see each other sometime in the near future. I would love that. All right. Okay. Yep. Bye. Bye-bye now. Bye.